Welcome into that betting show for July 1st, 2019. Your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. He's Teddy Savrancy. Give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour at Right Side VP. Let's get right into it. A wild day of free agency day one. KD goes to the east. We wait for Kawhi. Let's get right to the hot topic section here, Teddy. Interesting day, none the least. Duran, as we say, goes to Brooklyn. Iggy shipped off to Memphis. So we see that dynasty sort of downshift out there in Golden State. Taking a look also at some odds shifting as we speak. These were taken directly. Directly off of DraftKings out of New Jersey. The Lakers plus 300, the Bucks plus 600, and the Raptors plus 800. A lot of that, Teddy, can change with that Kawhi Leonard decision due shortly. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Kawhi, just one piece of the puzzle that needs to fall into place. There's a ton to talk about here. Obviously, Brooklyn, the biggest story on the opening night of free agency. Guess what? You know, they've got a super team now uh, and will be priced accordingly. So when you talk about point spread bargains, future bargains, the Nets have the star power for New York. Of course, the Knicks don't. (laughs) Uh, We have to laugh at the Knicks for a minute. Yeah, let's tank. Let's trade Porzingis. Let's do everything we possibly can to create cap space and get a high draft choice. And, oh, we didn't get the top two picks. (laughs) And we didn't get any free agencies. Julius Randle, the big addition for the New York Knickerbockers. They, too, Likely to be lined, what, in the 20-something win range <laughs> again uh, this next year. Uh, the team that I was impressed with, and I had sneaky good moves, Indiana. The uh, Pacers have made themselves into legit Eastern Conference contenders over the course of the last couple of weeks. I like just about everything they've done, and they're not a team that the markets appear to be particularly excited about. Jimmy Butler to the Heat, I didn't see that coming, Donnie, did you? Uh, Miami nope. trying to get the superstar uh, what they probably need for a team that's been languishing in that seven or eight spot in the East uh, ever since LeBron and company, uh, or LeBron in particular, uh, left town. Milwaukee's the last team I want to talk about here. The Bucks lose Brogdon, pay Middleton, pay Lopez. I agree with paying Lopez. I do not agree with paying Middleton over Brogdon. You ask me which of those two guys I'd rather have for the next five years? It's not even close. I'll take the young guy with the upside, not the jump shooter in Middleton. But Milwaukee chose to pay the veteran and let Brogdon walk. I wonder if that's a move they'll regret somewhere down the line. Yeah, also, Miritich bounces out and goes over to Europe, which changes a little bit of the landscape. But you did talk about, you know, D'Angelo to the uh, Warriors now in the sign and trade, Jimmy Butler to the Heat, which was kind of interesting there. Al Horford just over the Sixers. It's a wide open race. It's actually going to be a lot of fun, Teddy, talking NBA next year because it looks like unless Kawhi goes to the Lakers and they, you know, shift in a couple of these mid-level exceptions, guys on their severely short contracts that they can make a run at. It seems like the NBA is set up for a lot of fun. And you're right. Let's talk about the New York Knicks here. How many years have we seen it now, Teddy? It, it has to be at least going on a decade now. The Knicks are freeing up spots. Everybody wants to come to New York. Who wants to play at the Mecca? And they struck out on LeBron twice, KD twice. It just seems like they're not going to get anybody in here. And also, not, we're not talking about like clearing spots the last few minutes, Teddy. We're talking about max level exceptions that they've had sitting and waiting, and they can't even get an actual meeting with some of these top name free agents. So as the world turns here in the NBA, we're waiting on Kawhi. We'll keep you updated right here on that betting show at sportsbookreview.com. But interesting day nonetheless. How about another interesting weekend, we should say? Historic run support over there in London. 50 runs scored, Teddy, between the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees in the London series. 65 hits, 16 doubles, and 10 home runs. This wasn't a five-game series, Teddy. This was a quick weekend jaunt over uh, over to London. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the over was as high as 16 and a half for Sunday's game. That's the highest MLB total I've ever seen, ever. And four to two after six, heck, the first five under cash, no problems. But the big innings were really big all weekend. There were seven half innings in the two games with four runs or more scored, <laughs> including some whoppers, a nine-run inning, a six-run inning. But when you have seven half innings in two games, When you're scoring four runs or more, you're going to cash some over tickets. Betters did that all weekend if you were playing the Yankees and the Red Sox in London. The warm weather certainly has something to do with it. So did the short fences. (laughs) And bottom line, over betters cash, despite it being the single highest total I've ever seen for a major league game. 
Exactly. And also, you're looking in the seventh inning, like, hey, man, got a pretty nice under going on here. And it changed in the matter of minutes. They were talking to the pitchers there. The ball sounded different when it was hit. It was just traveling farther. And the one criteria that you said, you know what, Teddy, which we talked about previous, how you could possibly keep this game under was the foul ground territory. We saw maybe one or two balls, but a lot of times, Teddy, these guys were running, looked like a mile to get after that ball. And it still landed in foul toward territory where they couldn't make the <laughs> catch. So just an interesting series. But Major League Baseball says it was a success. Obviously, sold out stadiums there. You bring two of the big name teams over uh, Shores. They want to certainly milk to other continents now to play some regular season games. But that was an interesting one over the weekend, getting all of those runs. How about this one, Teddy? You want to talk about getting all those runs in London? Let's downshift over to Max Scherzer, who barely anybody getting any runs on. Eight innings, one earned run, 14 Ks back in Motown. He was absolutely sensational. Sensational for the entire month. One of the best free agent pitcher signings that you're ever going to see. And how about those Tigers, Teddy? You want to talk about having problems? Most people say, you know what? Struggling on the road. Let's get back home and win some games. They've won three of their previous 25 home games. Yeah, that is a rough record. As for the Nationals, look, I went out last week, I bought, and I don't bet a lot of futures. I bet Nats to win the division. I bet Nats to win the National League. I bet Nats to win the World Series. I do think they're alive for a real run, and Scherzer's performance yesterday tells us why they're alive to make a real run. A team that struggled mightily over the first half of the campaign in all kinds of different ways has seemed to have found their mojo and now back above a 500. As for the Tigers, their last eight home series, they played Houston, Oakland, Tampa, Minnesota, Cleveland, Texas. That's the top two teams in the AL East, the top two teams in the AL Central, and the top two teams in the AL West. And they also had Miami. <laughs> They're not supposed to get swept by Miami, but they did. And Washington at home. So seven of the eight teams that they faced were quality foes. That being said, three and 22 at home. If this is a streak you caught early. You're living the good life right about now. Unfortunately, at 3-22, and 22, you wonder how much value still holding. Then again, I bet there's a lot of bettors that don't even know that the Tigers are 3-22 and 22 in their last 25 games. The betting markets don't seem to take trends like this very seriously. Absolutely. On those Nationals that we were taking a look at, Teddy, look, man, three really good pitchers at the top of the lineup. They hit, excuse me, at the top of the rotation. They hit with that lineup. They can find a bullpen piece or two around that trade deadline. That might be something worth striking gold with as the rest of the season goes on. Now, Teddy, look, we turn the calendar today. Did you notice the top of the show today? July the 1st, another month closer to college football season. Today on That Betting Show, we're going to take a look at a top 20 football preview. Those Oregon Ducks. How about this, Teddy? 33-1 to 1 to win the 2019 NCAA title. The win total is at 9 plus 120. And we talk about head football coaches, what they do best. Mario Cristobal coming out of that Miami cloth through Alabama. He's a great recruiter. His best recruiting job, not getting a five-star athlete, getting the quarterback to stay next year in Justin Herbert. He's back. A lot of Ducks are going to be coming back to this season as well. Top two running backs, a couple wide receivers coming back to play. Also set up with a big SEC tilt, Teddy, August 31st, down in Jerry World. Sure, and there's a fair bit of hype around the Oregon Ducks this year, and it has everything to do with Herbert, a guy who could have been potentially the number one overall draft choice, who came back to play for his senior season, and he's going to be working behind an offensive line with more than 150 career starts between them. You know, four returning starters, four four-year starters on the offensive line, and then another senior uh, with the tackle spot on the right side. So, uh, I mean, uh, this team loaded up front, and a QB who can make plays with his feet and make plays with his arm, and a QB who's saying all the right things. Quote, we're not going to let outside pressure affect us. We're not going to worry about what anyone else is saying. We're just going to focus in-house and worry about what we have to say. You talked about the skill position talent. Look, they can run the football. Yeah, they lost Dylan Mitchell, but no question. <laughs> they've got a strong receiving core, a uh, new uh, receiving coach, for, uh, new receiving coach, former Utah State assistant Javon Booknight, uh, who is supposed to instill discipline in that unit. I do have concerns about Oregon, big concerns. On the defense side of the football, uh, they brought on Andy Avalos from Boise State, throwing Jim Levitt out the door. A couple of th third-year starters at cornerback. Strong safety. I like the secondary. I do not love this front seven. I wonder where the pass rush is going to come from. I think you might be able to run the football against Oregon. And this one of these little things you want to pay attention to, they're hoping their true freshman, Camden Lewis, can be their kicker and maybe their punter, which means when it comes to uh, <laughs> special teams units, the kicking and punting games, when you talk about hoping the freshman can do them both, that's a concern for me. And when you talk about a team that's 
having big hopes, talking about winning conference titles and ranked in the top 15 and all of that. All it takes is a bad punt or a missed field goal at the wrong time, and all those hopes come crashing down. I worry about Oregon special teams. I worry about their defense. They're not a team I'm looking to bet over the total, despite the success and the potential of Justin Herbert on the offensive side of the football. Kickers in college football, Teddy, no strangers to some bad beats out there. Freshman kicker, 35 yarder, just needs to make it. Whether or not you win or lose your bet, always a tough challenge there. But we'll keep you posted and ready for college football season as we go throughout the summer here on That Betting Show. Let's take a look at a little bit of Major League Baseball today. Skeleton crew, as we like to say, on the Major League on the major league card tonight. Overnight line movers, though, Teddy, SBRodds.com. Get all the latest here. We're moving in this one. An opener in Tampa opens high. Sitting around minus 250, raises to about minus 260, even 265s currently sitting on the board. Stanek and Eshelman tonight with a total of nine down in the dome. The Rays coming off their first losing month in more than a year. They went 13 and 16 in June, but they came out of June on a nice momentum. You know, the way one three of the last four. Snell yesterday was absolutely brilliant. They needed a bounce back showing from him, the reigning AL Cy Young winner. And despite you know, some of their recent struggle. You know, this team hasn't won a, that was a, hasn't won a series. Or the series against win against Texas was their first series win since they took three out of four in Boston back in the first uh, weekend of June. They're still two games ahead of Texas for the wild card spot. They're still a team uh, that the markets appear to like. And the markets definitely <laughs> don't like Tom Eshelman, who's making his MLB debut, a guy that went two and five with a 4.46 ERA in 13 starts, Started at double A, moved up to triple A. It's an Orioles team. It's on pace to lose 115 games. They got shut out again yesterday. The market's not excited about Baltimore, even with Ryan Stanek going as the opener. Ryan Yarbrough expected to get the bulk of the innings for Tampa Bay tonight. Yeah, Teddy, when you take a look at Baltimore, I mean, you're already behind the eight ball as is. You're going on the road playing a team that's better than you, and then Eshelman's going to get the start. And you always remember here in the Philadelphia Phillies, like, the guy was traded for international slot money is going to get the start today this year. That doesn't bode well here, so we'll see what happens a little bit later tonight. Total on the move in Texas. We had a 10 and a half rise to 11, Teddy. Now back to 10 and a half here at SBROdds.com. The Angels are going to take on the Texas Rangers. Miners on the mound versus Suarez. The markets don't like Miners. Uh, you know, yeah, he's an all-star. Yeah, he leads the American League in ERA. Yeah, he's won his last three starts. <laughs> yeah, he dominated the Angels. Uh, you know, when he faced him earlier, a career shutout, second career shutout against uh, L.A. Gave just three hits uh, in that ball game. Yeah, the manager, Chris Woodward, is saying that Miner's the best pitcher in baseball right now. Quote, when you have the weapons he has, it just isn't fair sometimes. You, you, try, you watch those poor guys trying to swing, and it's just unfair. Yeah, Miner has owned L.A. in his career. Never lost against them. 2.23 RA in seven games. Five starts against them. But <laughs> why'd the money come on the over? You know why it came on the over. Mm -hmm. Number one, they don't like Suarez. <laughs> the guy who uh, is a ERA over five and an expert over five and is just getting called up from AAA for this start. But number two, the advanced metrics on Miner say the 2.4 ERA is bullshit. It's a 4.31 XFIP. He has a low strikeout rate, a relatively high walk rate, and an unsustainable trend, strand rate of more than 88% of runners not coming around to score against him. The markets are saying Mike Miner is a fraud. The manager saying something very different. Yeah, how about that, Teddy? Also down in Texas today, you know, you get a, a nice cool day, 86 degrees at first pitch. We're not looking at 97s, so we'll see how that plays on it tonight. Let's go to Watch What You Bet here on That Betting Show for Monday. Got a nice little three-pack set up for you here. NL Central battle in Pittsburgh Cubs and the Pirates. Pirates currently a plus 108 total of 9.5. The Cubs 45-39 and 39 on the season. The Pirates 39-43. and 43. Al Zale versus Trevor Williams on the mound tonight. Yeah, I mean, the Cubs aren't playing good ball on the road. They've lost each of their last five road series, uh, losing again yesterday against Milwaukee. That dropped them into a first-place tie with the Brewers. Pittsburgh, you know, they won three out of five, nine out of 14. You know, since that, that seven-game skid, they've come alive. They had won three series and split one before losing the series at Milwaukee over the weekend when the bats went cold. But there's no question the Pirates playing much better ball now than they were just a couple of weeks ago, whereas the Cubs have struggled consistently to win on the highway. Of course, the issue with Pittsburgh, Trevor Williams, you know, he came off the DL with a right side strain. He hasn't fully regained his form. 11 runs in two starts back. Um, hit hard against the Astros last time. His quote, I'm thankful that I'm healthy and my body feels great. 
I'm thankful Clint Hurdle let me go out for the seventh. For me to go out of the seventh and get to 100 pitches to do that is only going to help me in his next start. But, you know, Alzale is a guy who has potential. You know, give a leadoff homer in his first career start and then pretty much dominated the rest of the way. Uh, retired 12 of his next 13 batters. Came out after a three-walk fifth, 87 pitches. Joe Madden, quote, he did well. He just ran out of gas. You can see how good he's going to be. There's a reason this line is pretty close to pick him, Donnie. It's a tough game to figure. Pirates playing well and in good current form, but the Cubs are the better of these two teams. All right, let's go to another NL Central battle here, Teddy. Milwaukee heads to Cincinnati. How about this one? The Reds, minus 105, so basically a pick them in this game. Total of 10, taking a look at 7 p.m. Eastern time, MLB Extra Innings. Great American Ballpark, Cincinnati, Ohio. Brewers, Teddy, coming in 45 and 39. The Reds, 38 and 43. Scooter Jeanette appeared and back into the lineup over the weekend, so getting a little bit healthy there for those Reds. It's going to be Hauser versus Maley tonight. Yeah, this is a wild NL Central. There's only five and a half games separating the first place team, the Brewers, and the last place team, uh, the Reds. Milwaukee kind of righted the ship at home over the weekend against the Pirates. They haven't been playing great ball. Their offense still uh, isn't clicking. They haven't scored more than four runs in any uh, of their last six ball games. You know, uh, stole one yesterday, 2-1 victory when Eric Thames uh, hit the uh, tie-breaking home run. This team hasn't won three straight since the first week of June. Craig Council, quote, you're not making progress, but you're not hurting yourself. That's what happened in June. We're going to try to get better because we know we need to be better than that to be a, a playoff team. You know, Adrian Hauser going as the opener for the Brewers today. He hasn't been great. He has a 9.00 ERA uh, in that role. He was in the role last Wednesday against Seattle. Gave up three runs on four hits in two innings. Threw 64 pitches in those two innings. That's certainly a concern for Brewers backers tonight. And I'm telling you. This is a huge homestand for the home team. They put a lot of emphasis on it coming into the series against the Cubs, and they won that series. I wouldn't be surprised they win this one, although, Mal, the Reds are 4-11 and in his 15 starts. Yeah, it does tend to give up a little bit of the long ball there, but you're right, an interesting NL Central as we go along through the summer. How about this, Teddy? It's Monday night. Hey, look, we need one last shot, right? Some of these things to try to handicap and go over. Late night in the NL West to finish up a nice little Monday card. Giants and the Padres. Padres, heavy favorites here, minus 163, a total of eight. If we take a look at the teams here coming in, the Giants, 36 and 47 on the season. The Padres, just over 500 at 42 and 41. The Shark on the mound, Jeff Samarja versus Allen tonight. Yeah, that was a bad loss for the Padres yesterday. They had a 3 nothing lead. Uh, they gave up a couple of cheap runs. And then the tying run on two errors. They blew a bases-loaded scoring chance in the eighth with only one out. And then they lost uh, in 11. They had won four straight prior to that loss. The question is, is there any hangover effect for San Diego after essentially giving one away uh, yesterday? Certainly like the promise of this kid, Logan Allen, uh, two, at big league starts, two uh, blowout Padres win. Uh, you know, two runs, 11 hits, four walks, 10 strikeouts, 13 innings. The numbers uh, have been good. Uh, and, of course, uh, it's a Giants lineup that got going yesterday, but that's been the exception rather than the rule. Uh, San Fran certainly hasn't left these at any point this season. Samarja has had a pretty good track record against the Padres. He's pitched well at Petco, 8-3 and three against San Diego, an ERA uh, of under 3.5. And, um, and he's been pretty good at Petco, real good at Petco. You know, allowing less than a base runner per inning, but only one quality start in his last 10 trips to the hill. That came against the lowly Orioles, the Giants, just two and seven in his last nine. Yeah, also, we have Mad Bum Watch right now. Had a decent start out there. We'll see if he gets moved before the trade deadline in the next upcoming weeks. But, Teddy, off the mic segment today, how about this? It's July. Remember sitting back in the classroom now, maybe me and Teddy a little bit older, where we actually had chalkboards that were still in the classroom. And you would see up there, it'd say December 1st, like, oh, my goodness. Christmas is already here. How about this, Teddy? It's the first of the month. Look at those Atlanta Falcons. They get to camp July 21st. We're three weeks away from everything right here. Sports wagering in July. Let's take that little bit of a downturn. You have that whole nice little break there for Major League Baseball that goes to the All-Star game. And also, right here on that betting show, just want to remind you, we're going to go strong all week long, setting you up and getting you ready. And then we're going to go on a little bit of a hiatus to refresh, recharge, and get ready, Teddy, because football season goes hard. We've been going at it for a while here, since New Year's Day all the way through, giving you what you need here, Teddy. Yeah, I mean, look, we don't take time off. You know, we work Fourth of July. We work New Year's Day. We work Christmas, whatever it takes. <laughs> to give you guys information that you need to make educated wagers on a daily basis. That's my job. That's Donnie's job. We take it very seriously. The show is all about info. 
That being said, we're burned out, man. I'm exhausted. And this is the time <laughs> of year where you have to refresh and we have to recharge the batteries. Uh, we'll take a short hiatus, three weeks. We'll be back before the end of July. We'll be back for the start of the NFL preseason. And, of course, we'll be here all week. But starting next Monday, for a couple weeks, we need to find your news somewhere else. Or maybe you take a break, too. That being said, when we come back for fall <laughs> on the last week of July, you can expect all the news you need to know every single weekday in 20 minutes or less. That's what we do right here on that betting show from sportsbookreview.com. You ain't lying, Teddy, and thank you for joining us once again on another day of that betting show for July 1st, 2019, your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. Maybe Kawhi picks a, a uh, leader in the clubhouse tonight, and we get to talk about it tomorrow. Join us once again, designed to get you out here in 20 minutes or less. He's Teddy Sabranti. Give him a follow once again on Twitter, at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour, Right Side VP. Join us tomorrow for yet another edition of That Betting Show.